Shalom, I want to give all of the praises to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh, Bashmi Hosha, Bashim Avrakak, Radash, and double honors to the apostles of the Great Millstone and salutations to the Yakim out there that continue to further this ministry throughout the four corners of the earth. And Shalom to those that are learning and listening and growing thereby as well. It's the Brother Monica Come coming at you with another lesson. And I want to get into this article here, which was written by Bruce Wilds. And he makes a very good point because the point is very prophetical on how the mutual assured destruction among these nations will leave no winners. There will be no winners of these nations after this war. You have the Chinese, you have the Russians. They believe that they're going to be the next in line to rule when America's done for. But no, they're going to be done for as well. All right. And the, the, uh, the nation that will only but win are those that have believed in Yahweh Shai and that have overcame the destruction, the uncomprehendable destruction of third world, which cometh quickly. And when we are saved, we're going to be the ones to bear the victory and come down ruling the earth while the remainings among these nations are still alive and we're going to slap chains on them. All right. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into this article. Mutual assured destruction leaves no winners. Like many people, I do not find what is known as the concept of mutual assured destruction or mad to be reassuring. Today, those most fearful seem to be those people that lived through the tumultuous 1960s and the Cold War. To others, this may come across as business as usual. What the world would look like following a nuclear war is very murky. Yet today, it seems many people consider nuclear weapons as a just another tool or option for us to use in our defense if we are attacked. The nuclear deterrent we currently hold is a hundred times larger than needed to stop anyone sane or rational from attacking. America and for anyone else, an arsenal of any size will be insufficient. This is written to help put the issues of nuclear weapons in perspective. As a bit of a history buff, I find myself, excuse me, found myself in deep discussion with a curious young lad of nine while explaining to him how the airplane developed which included a rational important timetable i noted that its development was pushed forward because planes could be used as a weapon in wartime to my surprise i found he expanded the conversation to include the nuclear bomb and this young lad had a general acceptance of its use this could indicate people are losing some of the massive fear this is the point that they had for the use of nuclear weapons. Fear was the firewall that kept these weapons from ever being used for many of us growing up during the Cold War. And why is that of these some people, as he said, are not fearing of using these weapons because we're approaching the rightful time of the Third World, which is forth to come quickly pursuant to the Book of Revelations. So without further ado, we're going to get these scriptures. And the first scripture that I want to read is Isaiah 54, verse 16. Behold, I've created the smith. Albert Einstein, I got his first name. He was the one that created the nuclear missile. And then Jay Oppenheimer created the, the atomic bomb. So these were two individuals that created weapons of mass destruction because they're, um, they're, the, they're descendants of their forefather going back to Esau, which Esau was born with the ability to cause great destruction. He was blessed with the sword, which when you look up the word sword, in that particular chapter, the word is karab, which means to lay waste. So he was blessed with the ability to lay waste and his descendants will have that same blessing as well. All right, so there you have it right there. So the Lord would use these individuals to come up with the, uh, the weapons of his destruction. And basically, that's Esau maximizing his sword his ability to destroy so that eventually and so much so that he'll destroy himself and that these other nations destroy themselves with these weapons of mass destruction all right so as the man put it in this article mutual assured destruction leaves no winners exactly because mutually these nations they want to get it on and popping but what's going to happen after the after the smoke is cleared and the dust is settled the saints shall overcome. 
and win at the very end. And these other nations, they're going to be pretty much destroyed and confused, bugged out of their mind after the nuclear destruction. And we're going to slap chains on them bad boys. All right. This is what the Lord has in store to happen. It's preordained. It's prophecy. So anyway, let's read this again. It says, and behold, I have created the smith that blow of the coal in the fire and that bringing forth an instrument for his work. And I've created the waste to destroy. So these missiles are the Lord's missiles and these missiles are going to do the purpose of the Lord, which is to destroy America to be exact, which is known in the Bible as old daughter of Babylon. And then also these other nations, they're going to be destroyed in different degrees. But America will be destroyed at its highest degree. All right, because that's the land of the great deliverance and that's the land of the great destruction. And that's the land of where most of all of the wickedness that we know about today, which has been promoted from that land or that particular nation that run that land to be exact. Okay, so America would have to get it. The nation that has influenced the world on wickedness. So anyway, let's move forward. Let's get the book of Psalms 7. And we will read. We'll begin with reading verse 12. Psalm 7, verse 12. It says, um, you know, verse 11 it says, The Most High judge of the righteous, and the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he, he will wet his sword and he have bent his bow and made it ready. And he have also prepared for him the instruments of death. What is the instruments of death? The nuclear missile. And they're going to be instrumental in destroying all of these different places, man. The main place being at is America. Babylon the Great. This is what we preach about. Like the last video that I did, I was talking about on how the Chinese are gearing their people up to hate on Esau because eventually they're going to want to fight them real soon. So what are they going to be fighting them with? Are they going to go back to the ancient world and, and use swords and, and um, bucklers and shields? No. They're going to use missiles and missile defense systems and all of that, which is what they have, tanks and all of the weapons of war that they possessed. And so was America. That's what they're going to be using. So as it reads, it says, and he have also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Exactly. The modern day persecutors are the so-called white people, the Edomites, which have persecuted the Israelites um, time and time again and still that they do so as well and that's how also pursuant to the book of revelations I believe it's the 14th chapter I think I'm wrong on that where it says um, the accuser of our brethren has been cast down how is this devil going to be cast down by his blessing being used and then it will be his curse verse 14 behold he travailed with iniquity and he have conceived mischief trouble and brought forth falsehood he made a pit and digged it and is fallen into the ditch which he made his mischief shall return upon his own head and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. i will praise the lord according to his righteousness and i will sing praise in the name of the lord yahweh the most high exactly so when we're all the living that's what we're going to be doing and as well as we're going to be singing the song of moses pursuant to the book of revelations the 15th chapter okay so that's what's going to be when it's all said and done, when the smoke is cleared and, the, <laughs> you know, the dust is settled. These nations will lose and we will bear the victory. That's who's going to win at the end. And the expectation of the righteousness will come and that we will see the judgment of the wicked. That's what we expect. That's what we look forward to. What else is there to look forward to rather than that? All right, we hastening the coming of the day of the Lord. Let's get that in the book of uh, Peter's. Or oh, before I go there, let me read this. Second Interest 15, verse 6. 
It says, For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, save the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit, and neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise in themselves. So all of that's going to be done for. All of the wickedness that have exceedingly polluted the earth due to the influence of America, that's all going to be gone and dissolved. Why is that? Because pursuant to 2 Peter 3 verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervor and heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So as we look into the sky, we know that the skies and it is polluted from the very water that we drink. So it's going to have to take fire to cleanse all of that away, including the, the wickedness which have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Seeing then that all these things which shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversations and godliness? This is it. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervor and heat. And nevertheless, we according to his promise, which are the elect, those that believe on the gospel of the kingdom, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And that's what we look forward to. That's exactly what we look forward to. So yeah, it's quite scary to talk about a great current event which is going to shake the world, but in the midst of all of that, it's going to bring in a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwell of righteousness, rather than the heavens and earth that are now, which is kept in store unto fire against those of the sons of perdition and of ungodly men. You see? And I think that's it, man. I think I've made my point on this particular article and this lesson. So um, with that, I want to give all of the praises to the Most High and the Son, Yahweh. Bashim Yahusha, Bashim Raka Hakwadash. And um, Shalom to all of the Akim out there. Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, Baraka Thumb. To the Akim that's teaching and also to those that are learning and listening and growing thereby as well. And last but not least, but what I should have said first, even unto the men that have taught me this truth, the apostles of the great millstone, Shalom.